once upon a time, there were millions of businesses struggling. Every day they wasted time, effort, and money on repetitive tasks that added no value. One day, the Better Automation Podcast by Processio came to help them find a way. Because of this, these businesses save time, reduce costs, innovate, and make better decisions. Because of that, these businesses grow, scale, and use human creativity to change this world. Hello, my name is Aziz, and I'm your host at Better Automation Podcast by Processio, where I interview the world's top experts and share their very best ideas on how to improve automation in your business processes and life. My guest today is Frederick the Frisian MBA. Frederick is the CEO and of Chills and an entrepreneur delivering a low code solution with a strong vision regarding digital transformation and organizational change. Frederick, how are you today? Hello Aziz, thank you for having me on this podcast. I'm very well and I'm excited to speak and contribute value to uh, for your listeners. Thank you, I'm excited as well. And so what is something exciting you're working on these days? Well, we, uh, we have the, the chills. Uh, it is chilling, as, you, uh, as the word says, because it, it has a huge impact on, uh, on technology, of on, on businesses, uh, and the impact it has primarily on uh, digital transformation is huge, because it's the chills backend, as we call it, is uh, data management. That's what it does but it saves customers uh, 60% of their costs, uh, which is primarily in reduced time. Uh, the, the work, the data management is getting, is done much more effective. And that's, that's in, a, in a nutshell what uh, Chills is. It's, it's built on a low-code technology, which is the reason why it's, uh, it is able to deliver these, these benefits for customers. And this, this low-code technology is uh, the core. It's um, invented by my partner. He's CTO, uh, partner in the business. And low-code is the automation of hard coding. That's what it is, actually. Um, it is a technology which is uh, new. Um, we invented it based on a, a dream we had uh, many, uh, many years ago when we started our, our company. I'm, fr I'm from the business side and I'm very much in process changes, but I'm always stuck in an application because uh, if I really want to move forward and change an organization, it all has to be done in applications. And these applications are stuck and changing applications is a very expensive um, project often and the results are very questionable and doubtful when they are also delivered. Uh, so we we worked on changing uh, this 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 application landscape, and my partner Bort Overbe he came up with a low code technology where we were both looking at changing applications, make them much more dynamic, but also automation, and that's why we are now in your podcast, better automation. And after the development time, we chose to focus on data management. So it's more the back end. It's not the front end. Front end are applications where you what you show, uh, where your, your, the majority of your employees work in. But the, we focus on the back end. And the back end is the data management, the data registered from sensors, from applications themselves, from external sources. And that's what you where you have to do a lot of the job and there is also a lot of costs uh, and IT budgets are ab absorbed, are uh, used for that purpose. And that's often done in hard coding. And that's where we step in. That's where we see we can deliver value for our customers. So it's kind of a whole new renaissance. Uh, what's happening in this, this uh, technology world? Thank you. So if I understood you correctly, you and your partner had this dream and you invented a low-code technology because a lot of the back-end or software or processes are hard to manipulate, to adapt, to make flexible. And therefore, you have this idea and you had this technology through chills which is chilling like you said 
And therefore, I want some clarification. If you were to explain in a simple way to someone who doesn't understand, what is low code really? What is unique about your low code solution that you said it's something you invented? And how is it a renaissance? Uh, low code is the automation of hard coding. And what it does, it, it, um, uh, you have blocks with predefined steps. And these blocks of low code, you can connect to each other. So in a way, it's like a puzzle. You have an, uh, a process you want to do in, in hard coding with your data. And then you connect it to another step, which is also automated. It's already written, so you can connect all these steps. Um, there is to go a little bit more in depth because it's necessary. There is also no code. What I described now is no code. You just have fix, fixed blocks of predefined steps you connect to each other. And then you have to do no coding anymore. And then the data is flowing through. So it's more for simple processes. And there are a lot of um, companies who deliver no code solutions. If you go to low code, what we deliver, there is still an opportunity to go into a block of uh, low code with a lot of no code, and then you, but you can still change hard coding. And that's very necessary for companies to distinguish themselves from their competitors. Because if there's only low co no coding, everybody is becoming the same, and then there is still no differentiation between competitors out there. But if you can go in the low code and change the hard coding and make very specific uh, data processing uh, rules, then you can really, that's, that it will become the, the core of your business and it will be also the, your IP rights. Uh, re referring to this, this low code is very important for businesses. But the, the, the big thing is the, uh, you mentioned the Renaissance, it's, the fact that uh, we are not dependent on experts anymore. Like we have in the old days, you had monks who could write and they were writing primarily the Bible again and again and again. And it was in Latin. And then we had the printing press, which made it possible for people to print uh, books in their own language and in uh, huge quantities. And that's how you have to see low code. Low code are kind of pages with coding you can put after each other. So you get a whole book of uh, automation. And it's very easy to change it. If you want to take a book out of a page out and, and rewrite it in low coding, that can be done very easily. So if you want to change the story of your company, you can do that. And that's, that's the renaissance. It's also the shift of power instead of the, the few people in monasteries who were writing in the past, who could write. Now it's uh, the democratization of uh, hard coding is happening because we get into that in a late, at a later point. Anybody with that so-called uh, people with less skills, that's the so-called citizen developers, they can work in this low code application and do a lot of work and make a lot of data flows and a lot of data management. So it's becoming much more accessible for a much broader public, like the Renaissance when reading and printing became possible for a, for a huge public. And it had, well, major consequences in Europe and in the world, uh, actually. I agree 100%. And it seems to be, since you spoke about people with less technological skills, that this will allow a lot more collaboration, possibility f to change some things, to test some things by the business people, not only the IT department, and maybe the graphical format can allow them to understand each other in ways where before dealing only with code would not be possible. What are your thoughts about this? Uh, very good point. Uh, thank you for mentioning it, Aziz. The, the, the low coding is the presentation. How do we present it? Uh, and that is presented in a graphical format. So you see building blocks, literally. And the, the digitalization and automation to make it accessible, uh, not only for, for uh, citizen developers, but also for the management, who often is looking at literally a black box with a lot of coding and, and in a language 
they don't understand. If you go to low code, and specifically our Chills backend, management can see actually a data flow, they understand. So there is no coding. You see just blocks of low code and you see the data which is flowing through. So this makes it not only accessible for uh, the business, but it's also the collaboration you talk about, which is crucial for any organization who wants to become digital. Digital transformation does not only mean using technology and investing and, and trying to uh, the IT department to do no more, but it's also the integration and the collaboration between the business and IT, because IT must know what they have to do but then they have to show what they're doing and a business has to be able to explain this is what we want and it makes it much easier in a graphical format so you see all the flows you see all the the adapters as we call them all the connection with the different databases it certainly becomes visible and understandable for the business so that is a huge step forward for uh, businesses in general uh, and it enables a, a step towards digital transformation, or a start at least. So what's the next step towards digital transformation? If you could first explain what it means to, you know, the concept of digital transformation, what are the steps towards it, and how does it affect organizations and their culture? Yeah, that's a, a, a huge uh, step. It's, it's as, to make it to... To look at it from a bigger perspective, we, they talk about the fourth industrial re revolution. And that's really what's happening because all companies have been built uh, so far on a um, hierarchy, which is huge and which was necessary to control all these different departments, which most definitely had a function. But a lot of people, as, as you said in your introduction, they were doing a lot of tasks which uh, can be automated no nowadays and the people themselves can make them much more useful in organizations. So in order to, to go to a transformation, the digital is just an enabler. And what you really want to do is to change the mindset of a company. Uh, we wrote an article about it uh, with one of our uh, advisors. Um, it's much more the, the mindset which has to change, which means you have to look uh, from a different perspective what you do. So you have to look at your core business and then you have to ask yourself, okay, which data is relevant for my core business? What do my customers want? Which data do I have to show or have to analyze in order to understand my customers better? So it's, it's, it's very much about data and it's about data flows and presenting data. Because when you have this data in, for example, the low code, you have data flows, you deliver it to a database, then you can take the next step to business intelligence, which makes, uh, which means reports and, uh, uh, reports and graphs and dashboards where you have really relevant information uh, visible for, for management. And then you can really make choices for your organization. How are you going to change it? How are we uh, streamlining the organization to make it more flat? Because every decision which has to be made at the level is taking time. And when this information is coming directly through, you can make decisions much faster. And you find actually you move towards a much more agile organization. Thank you. I love that. You know, especially the business intelligence improvement part where a lot of executives feel as if they're driving a car, but they're only looking at the rear view mirror. <laughs> they're not looking ahead as well as they're not sensing what truly is working, what is not working. So you spoke about moving into an agile mode of business or something like that. So how would that affect business models in the future, their evolution, their change, and what do, can we expect? Now you asked me to look into the future, and that's a very, very difficult thing. <laughs> but I can give you some, some hints and some, some a vision, again, how we see 
uh, businesses should uh, well, we propose a way how to how to work with it and and business can experiment with it it's once you have the the you start with low code but it's only a technology and when you have then the data available it goes to the management and then they make decisions and the decisions can mean we have to change the organization and then you have a kind of a wheel which starts to turn around because the in the morning when a decision is made the low code is so flexible that the new data which the management wants to see in reports you can start to um, register that in the afternoon or you can uh, have an, another data processing in order to get the right information which can also be done in the same the same day or the next day the information itself it will of course take a little bit more time to have sufficient data which has to go through your processing in order to have to be re reliable enough but that that is making a an, an, uh, business very agile because everything beco is becoming digital and it also requires a lot from the management in order to to make these steps and you can start very small to see that it's it's working that way i'm making a circle now with my hand and we we call it a dynamic business model and this uh, model is available on on our website and it's it's just very simple it's it's the four steps from the the, the data processing towards the the business intelligence business intelligence and then it goes to management and then the management has to make decisions about transformation about new processes which is then implemented by another group of people and they make the change happen they they pinpoint directions and they uh, can sit with it together in a graphical format we call chills and they can monitor these changes themselves instead of uh, handing it over what's often happening to an IT department, which is only hard coding it. And they never understand what's actually happening. But this is changing with a low-code backend like Chills. So it's, it's a really exciting uh, development. And we, uh, we're working with companies who are really eager to, to get this in motion. But as you also mentioned, the, the change process, the, the willingness to change, it's, it's huge. So we also recommend uh, companies to take small steps and to have not a, a huge plan, but st start small scale and start testing it and start to maybe have a parallel uh, uh, process going around and see how it works with one part. Uh, so you reduce the risk for your current operation, but you have to do something because low code, you see it popping up more and more and Gartner is also writing about it uh, low code application providers so it is coming and we want to help companies in order to uh, to adopt it and well basically it's a it's also survival because it's the changes are so huge and consumer behavior is changing the needs are changing so you have to get a good grip on what's happening in the market I agree and I love what you're mentioning about chills can you, you know, share what is it, what technologies are there that are not found in other places? What solution is it providing? And what's the ecosystem it's part of, the whole business model ecosystem, how it works? And how can people think about it so that they think about the business of the future in a new way? Well, we to, to disclose an, an, <laughs> another uh big part but we what my partner because uh, i really give him a lot of credit what he made uh, with his low code technology not only the technology but also the front end you work in the the chills uh, back back end it's funny it's a front end for a back end but it's a it's like an application you work in um you can share low code you made already so if you make a piece of low code it's not only restricted to one flow it's, it's in a location where you can um, use it again. So we work with that concept and what, it, what we came to is a marketplace. And a marketplace is opening up for much more opportunities where you can share with other applications, uh, with chills tenants as we call it, so unique chills uh, backends, but you can 
share uh, low code functionality between tenants. What we also did is the, the collaboration part because sometimes you need specific knowledge or you need experts or whatever. You can invite them in your own chills tenant. So if people have a chills tenant, they can work with you. They got a, an assignment and they can finish it and then you lock them out again. So the world is becoming, it's more the ecosystem you, you mentioned where all companies can also work together uh, with each other to create more local technology, but also to share resources between them. If they, if they want, of course, you can also have what's, what you see nowadays a lot that people become independent and you can become an, an independent low code um, developer, programmer, and you can put it on marketplace with a price and then people can buy it from you. So it's just like apps, but if you develop low, but if you develop low code, uh, you can also show what you do. So it's also a showcase for yourself. Uh, and that is, that is opening an, a whole new world for, for coding. Because uh, you can still, it's low code, you have a frame, uh, a low code block, but the company itself can go in and make the adjustments in the hard coding. So it's still unique to every company. And that makes it, it's very uh, exciting. Uh, you mentioned ecosystem. That's, a bis that's our business model. Um, we do not we do not have the intention to grow very large but we want to share it with a lot of other companies and that means that other companies can sell chills uh, a lot of there are a lot of consultancy companies which of course work with hard coding they have a business model what we offer them is a, a recurring revenue because chills is is a recurring revenue what what customers pay for and we share the revenue with the companies who sell it to their customers. And we are, we are only in the back end. We work with technology, we work with education and the promotion of uh, low code and chills, which is beneficial for everybody in the ecosystem. That's why we do this podcast as well. And then we have, we have no control. And that's a very scary thing to let go of control. But that's the digital future, how we see it. Everybody has a place and everybody can position themselves in one or more ecosystems where they can work. And then you can independently in the ecosystem work with other customers and you can uh, trade uh, for, for, you can trade services, you can get paid for services. So that's the development of ecosystems we see all around the globe and we are also moving in that direction and inviting actually other companies who are interested in new business model. Maybe they want to have more certainty. They want to have recurring revenues, which we share with them based on their customers and the work they do with their customers. Uh, and it's the, the most important thing is it's not centralized with us. It is more, it's flat. It's just, that's how we see the future. And that's how we want to work together. And that, then we get the best out of people when everybody takes their own responsibility and, and put their efforts in and get paid basically for their efforts. And if you do little, then you get paid little, but that, that's, you give freedom to people, what they want to do in an ecosystem and to show their skills and uh, experiences. So we can have, we can be working directly with customers or we have uh, other partners, but you can think of a, a range of topics as these. Also change management, if you want to do a transformation and you work with culture or other things, you can find that in the ecosystem and invite people also physically to come over to your company and talk with employees. But that's, that's how an ecosystem develops and we try to make it as uh, attractive for other companies to join. I love that. So you're not trying to grow big, you're not trying to dominate, but you're trying to share the value in a way that is vertical and equal where everybody can have a chance, whether citizen developers who are selling their own low code skills to companies or companies, consultants using chills or whatever great tools that you're offering for their own clients and getting a recurring revenue that is shared with you 
or anything so that you focus on your core competencies, etc. And so if people want to be involved, what are the best resources for them to do so? Can you speak about your blog, your website, any social media? And I'll make sure to write it in the description as well. I will do that. Uh, people can can read much more about uh, Chills itself because we have blogs explaining parts and insights and perspectives on, on, on Chills. You can also see competitors, why we uh, distinguish ourselves from our competitors. That's all found on the blog, on the blog of, of, of Chills. And then we have dynamic integrations, which is the mother company, where we have more the, the bigger picture of um, how the digital society, for example. Uh, I just finished uh, three articles, one about digital identity, so the human itself. Second was the digital transformation of businesses. And I just launched today, actually, the digital state, the, the digital society, how that is evolving and developing. So you can have a very good idea of what, what we think, what we see around us. And it's, it's up to you to participate. Um, I'm, of course, available on LinkedIn. Uh, I can drop some links uh, below this podcast. And it's up to people to uh, to fill out a form we have on, on both websites to connect with us and to, well, we, we start with um, uh, to engage. We, we have the, the C from Chills. We use that also for the three steps uh, to, to engage. And the first step is courage, Aziz, because that is very important. You have to have the courage to step into this digital world and to start using new technology. And also then a, a new way, a new business model, a new way of collaborating. Uh, so the second, when you have the courage to do that, you go to the sea of communication. And then just like we do, we start now, we share experiences, we talk with each other, you ask questions. So you have to communicate. And based on that communication, you build trust. And when the trust is big enough and you have kind of a relation, you go to collaboration. And that's when you really start to 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 sell chills, to, to deliver services, to buy services. So that's the three G C's we use. It's uh, courage, it's communication, collaboration in order to get started with this ecosystem. And people can, well, either con contact me on LinkedIn or uh, use one of the forms on the, the chills uh, or dynamic integrations website. Thank you so much, Frederick. This was my privilege, my honor, and I'm all about collaboration because that's what the future will be all about. That I know I remember there is a, a title of at least a YouTube video. I think there is a book even which is called Competition is for Losers where the future is about collaboration and all about elevation, everything. And even this is an example of it because... Um, you know, Chills, Processio, it's in the same domain, but at the same time helping and supporting all the ideas, the views, learning from each other in many ways. And without Processio, this podcast wouldn't be possible. So Processio is a modern low-code, no-code platform for advanced automation and creating an enterprise-grade backend for your software. But each is unique, Chills is unique, Processio is unique, and all the people I recommend, they go check out Chills as well as test out Processio. There is a completely free account that you can get at Processio.app. And for those with business needs, you can get a very generous 50% discount when you use the code BETTER50 OFF, one word in capital letters. All the links and the, the information will be the, in the description. Frederick, thank you. You're a thinker. You're a thought leader keep going. The future is, you know, there is this quote, which I love, the best way to predict the future is to create it. And that's what you're doing. So thank you so much. Thank you, Aziz. I have nothing to add to that. That's exactly what we're doing. And we're inviting everybody as you did uh, to join and, and that we build a future together. We're happy with. Thank you very much for the opportunity to speak in Better Automation uh, podcast. Mm -hmm.